back to my bench. Today we have a Harris Digit. This particular one is a Digit CD. And these things are pretty well um, <laughs> ubiquitous. Lots of people have them. And they do a really good job. They're, they're, they're one of the better ones out there. And what they're used for is they do uh, basically they're the preamplifier for an FM transmitter. This particular version will do up to about 30 watts I guess somewhere around there and all the way down to whatever you need to drive your drive your transmitter. Um, it has on the front here um, it has a modulation modulation indicator. Let's see if I can get this on here. Wow. Come on, there you go. Alright. It has modulation indicator right there. It tells you a percentage of modulation. Over here it has um, all of your uh, indicators in the LCD display for forward power, reflected power, um, power PA amps and PA voltage. Over here it's got some uh, warning, diagnostic warning lights for RF mute, temperature, SWR, and whether the PLL is locked or not. Well, this one is misbehaving. And we're going to find out why. Basically, what it does when we turn it on, let's see, uh, okay, let's turn it on here. Well, first of all, let's get you started. Okay, we'll turn it on, and the RF mute and the PLL lights flash, and the modulation light goes up to where it's supposed to be <laughs> when there's no input. And over here for PA or for forward power, nothing. Reflected power, nothing. Amps, nothing. Volts, nothing. So, nothing. Well, and it just came on. There we go. It's, uh, what, 29.6 watts. The lights are off. And this is working. <laughs> it's in auto. And if we take a look at the output here of our, of my little Motorola, we can see about 28.2 watts. Um... 0.03 kilohertz off frequency and if we look at the spectrum analyzer and this one's sitting at what 95.9 it looks really good it looks beautiful however let us turn this off turn it back on well of course now it won't do it <laughs> That's the way it goes. But we're going to check it anyway, find out what's wrong, because if you... Let's see, here's my reflected is zero. There's my current, which is 2.65 amps, and my voltage is 6 point, or 16, 16 .8 volts, 17 volts. That's all correct. Of course, when you come and you start working on something, it's not supposed to work, it does. But we're going to check it out anyway. So the first thing we do always is we check voltages. These things are kind of easy to get open. Basically, you lift the lid like that. And there are a couple of boards over on this side over here. It's got the A4 board and the A9 board. This is um, a filter. This one is up converter. And then the main board in main insides of everything and it's all interconnected with these little uh, 
little jumpers that are have these weird little connectors on the end of them and they just plug in the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the voltages are coming up right you know what I always say always check voltages first you take a couple of screws out of the front of here off the sides disconnect a couple of cables uh, like that and one down in here we're turned off no AC coming into this thing at all uh, this is one big plug here you don't want to grab these by the cords by the way unless you really feel like fixing a plug or a jack and take this one out now we can lay it down and we can check some voltages so of course I would be sitting on my uh, all right. so we don't need any of the rest of this stuff running I just want to check the, the power supply voltages over here let's see if I can get this down just a little bit uh, okay so let's turn it on fan comes on you're drawing about 30 watts just for what's plugged in all right and our voltage is over here we've got all right so we're going to check our um, yeah our voltages on uh, these guys over here these are all of our voltages we saw the first one was 16.8 um, or 17 and if we look over there we got 16.89 that's correct uh, this one's supposed to be plus 6 volts and we got what 6.5 uh, this one I don't know if I can measure this minus 6 from this position let's see this ground no not really okay. and this one is supposed to be 5 volts I believe no minus 21 in oh it's minus 16 so that's minus 16 volts that's correct and this one is supposed to be 5 volts and it says what 4.97 so yes we have our voltages everything is everything's fine it looks fine however we don't know what's wrong I'm letting it warm up just a little bit here so now we're going to turn it off plug the cables back in again and there there this one is a short one I don't know why they want to make it so short but you gotta get right up inside of here to make it on okay we'll plug this guy back in maybe yeah, there we go and we'll plug this one back in all right so we know we got plus or minus six plus or minus 18 and 5 volts so we've got everything we're supposed to have well let's see what does it do now PLL light is flashing RF mute is flashing and I have no output so what's going on here now it doesn't work yay well we got to take some tests well you get into the manual and you look at the manual and it says somewhere up at the top here it says something about after the first step if you if the PLL light is on you go check the the area marked trashed RF signal seriously that's what it says right there trashed RF signal so <laughs> well follow that he says is the signal okay at a9 j11 that would be this guy right over here if I can get get you to see it uh, a9 j11 so we want to find out if that signal is okay we'll take that off we'll turn you on and We'll take a look at this 
signal up here on the scope. Then this should be RF out. Because jam it down in the hall. No, I wouldn't say that that's right. That looks like that's hunting pretty bad to me. I gotta get this just exactly right in here. I won't read it. These are there. No, no. So the answer is no. <laughs> For RF out, that's not right. Alright? Well, then it says, no, is the signal okay at A4J10? That would be this guy here, A4J10. Okay, from experience, I know they mean 11, okay? <laughs> what we're doing is we're checking the input to the filter. So this is your filter out. And do we have anything? No, look at that. Look at it. Jumping all over the place. Nope. That's not good. Alright. Sometimes it's easier just to follow the destructions. Alright, and it says, is the signal okay at A4J8? A4J8 is the up converter output. Ugh. And we'll check that. Yeah, no, it is not. Look at that mess. That's a mess. It says two, 2 megahertz of something or other, and it's bouncing back and forth. So I would say, nope, that's not good. All right, next one down. Is the LO clean at A7J5? Okay, that's back here. LO input. Well, we really can't read it from A4. So we have to go to A7, which is this one, and we want J5. These things are tight, okay? So what's the LO look like? Local oscillator. It's still, look at that, it looks like it's sweeping. Oh, what that thing is doing. It's just not good, okay? As a matter of fact, if I can get a picture of this, take this guy look at look at my spectrum analyzer it is sweeping it's walking across the band just picking it up off the little antenna on the spectrum analyzer so it that's definitely not right and we can tell that by looking at the looking at that as it <laughs> goes up and down in frequency all right so that one's not right well, at least it's a sign of something alive. All right, next one down is the 5.6 megahertz signal. Okay, at A3, J7. So that is A3, it's back here. You can't see that, A3 is back here. J7, FM out. So we'll look at that. Oh, well, looky there. That is at 5.65 megahertz. So yeah, that one's good. Ain't nothing wrong with that one. It's what it's supposed to look like. So we go on our little little test plot here to. Yeah, it's fine uh, for the 5.6 megs. So we need to, it says, is the LO clean? Oh, we went the wrong way. <laughs> so we went down here, we knew that was good from a yes point, but from a no point on our LO at A7J5, we said no. So we'll go this way over to debug PLL a7 or VCO A6. A7, A6. Okay, well, and she's still flashing away. So let's turn her off and let's turn
you off. And we'll ugh. ouch. Okay, so we'll pick this up. Alright. So we gotta take this guy out of here. Fortunately, all of these plugs are marked. Thank goodness. If they're not marked at one end, they're marked at the other end. Most of them are marked at both ends. So we can just pull these guys out. There. And this one. And let's see, where is it? Here it is. And I got tool. And we'll take we'll take the cover off here. So we're gonna check A7 first. This one is all sealed up on little little bouncy things. It, uh, it bounces inside of there. So, we're going to check this one first because that's the first one they got on the list. This thing's held down by six screws or six nuts and a little plastic washer here over that one so that it doesn't bite into that cable. That's nice. Ooh, that one's tight. Tight fit. Okay. First one of these I ever did, I was this thing started wiggling around in here like that. It just it just wiggles and I, I thought something was broken. But it's not. It's sponge mounted. Okay. Get these guys out of here. And everything is disconnected. I think we can pull this out without taking these things out of A6 over here. I'm pretty sure that the VCO, that's the voltage controlled oscillator over here. And, yep, there we go. All right, so we got this guy out. Nice. And these things are built awfully nice. All right, so we want to take the VCO out, VCO in. Like I said, these are marked. This says A7J2. So plug him back onto there. <clears throat> this one is A7J9. It goes back onto there. This one is A7J8. That would be the minus 15 volts into the VCO. This is A7J7, which is the plus 15 volts into the VCO. They even, they even use these little guys for power. And this one is the only one left over. It goes there. This one goes over to LON on, um, on the A4 card. And then this one goes, plugs back into here where it belongs. This is from the regulator, so this is your voltage. All right, now, first things we need to do, let's see if I can find it here. Um, yes. Well, okay, There's our, those were our voltages. We had all those. So now I need, uh, what, PLL board. Come on, PLL board. Okay, here's my PLL board. And we want to find out how our voltages look in there. Remember, check voltages first. Always, always check voltages first. You'd be surprised how many thousands of times I didn't and just regretted it because I spent hours trying to figure out what was wrong with something. So, um... 
let's see. So let's go. Let's take the plus or minus 15 volts off of here. And we'll measure those guys first. On. It ain't going to work, of course, because I don't have the VCO plugged in. But what's my voltage look like? Ah, there are minus 15 volts on the minus 15 volts. Plus 15 volts on the plus 15 volts. And where does it, where does the other one come in? That's those two. I also have a 5 volt regulator here. So let's see. It's uh, is that that one? I think so. Come on. Yeah. Okay. There's my 5 volt. No. Yeah. 7805. 7815. All right. Ah, uh, here it is. U. What is it? U. That's U3. So let's check our U3. And it would be in. In. Wait. In. That is a 70. That is a 7805T. And my in voltage is. 4 volts. Well, then my out voltage is going to be. 4 volts too. And the center here is ground, which it should be. So what does that do? That comes out of there. And the input right there. There's a capacitor. Yeah. Panel. 35 volts C11, which is right there. And C21 R15. And that goes up to J6 pin 1 which is up here and through R15. So R15 is right here. I have an input of 16.8 volts and an output of 4.4 volts. Wow, that's that's dropping 12 some volts across that resistor. What is that thing? What does it say? 4 47 ohms and there's a CR1 which is a 22 volt 5 watt zener which is right there which is going to have the same thing on that and the other side's grounded uh, hmm well I guess now we just check and see what the resistance looks like on this on this um resistor here. So here's one side. There's the other. We're looking at 83 ohms. 83 ohms? Um, is it blown zener or a bad resistor? I don't know. Let's check the check the zener. And it's hit a cap, it's coming up. That's about 0.5 and rising a little bit the other direction. 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Yeah, one volt. Well, that's going through that 100, 100, 100 microfarad cap. So that's okay. The zener's okay. So it's saying, it's telling me the resistor's bad. Measure that again. Yep, 83 ohms. Well, when you measure a resistor on a board, remember it can't be more than its rated value. It has to be less. Be or equal, uh, equal to. It can be less because it's, yeah, you know, in, in across something across it, but it can't be more than its rated value. Uh, okay, well, let's uh, take the rest of these plugs off. Checking voltages. I used to have to hire guys as technicians coming out of these technical schools. One of them is no longer around. I'm not going to mention the name. 
but I would give them little tests. And uh, one of the tests that I would do was I would lift the emitter resistor on a transistor, just a standard NPN uh, configuration, lift the emitter resistor so you couldn't see it and see how long it took them to track down why the amplifier didn't work or whatever it was, usually just an amplifier, simple little amplifier and they would go through all kinds of little gyrations and things trying to figure out what was wrong with this thing and I said you know how about this, you, you measure your collector for voltages and a lot of them they went immediately to an oscilloscope I said, measure, measure the collector voltage um, and see what it is and he says okay I said what's feeding it he says uh, well it's 12 volts and, okay that's good what uh, you know what is it across that resistor that's you know your your collector resistor up there he says uh, nothing it's not dropping anything or very little I said what's it on your emitter go down to the emitter and lo and behold the emitter's about 10 12 volts maybe a little less I said, what is that, what causes that? And then they go back into their school learning, the days when his professor told him to check voltages first, and they go, ah, oh, shucks, okay, and they'd find the emitter resistor. If they didn't find the emitter resistor, they didn't have a chance at all of being hired, because that's kind of the lowest base of things that you need to know. Uh, but if they did find it, even with my help, I, if they came up with it on their own, then they were they stood a chance. So, check voltages. Alright, here's my board and here's my that resistor we were talking about. Uh, we're just waiting for the solder weapon to charge up here a little bit. While I'm doing that, I'm going to look and see if I can come up with a 47 ohm 2 watt resistor. I might, might have to make it 95 or 100 ohm 1 watt resistors for a test here. Uh, uh, not there. Those are half watt. Well, do I have... Yeah, I got some 100 ohms. I hate to use these for just a test because I am, if this is what's wrong with it, I am going to order it. But I'll take uh, two 100 ohm, those are two watts. I want to save those. Let's see. There's a, there's a one watt. There's a one watt. Yeah, save these guys. I don't, I don't, don't want to use those for that. Um, and we're going to uh, put them in parallel. And of course, we're going to test them and make sure what we got here. Take the meter and on homages 47, 48, 46, 50. Wow, I got two that were actually right. Okay, we're gonna go with it. Three ohms really probably isn't gonna make that much difference. Okay. But double value will, that's for darn sure. <laughs> It got a little toasty. Right there. Alright, so we'll take this guy and 
stick them in here. This is for a customer. So I'll ask him if kludging it together is good and he's in a hurry to get it back. If not, I will order 47 ohm 2 watt resistor. Although, since this is about a 2000 version of this thing, I might be able to get 47 watt or 47 ohm 5 watts. <laughs> that'll fit in here. This is not used as a fuse. This is used as a brute force dropping resistor and I disagree with that immensely but it's done all the time. If you want to do voltage regulation uh, don't just drop the voltage by brute force like this, please. Because they burn up. Okay. Alright, there we go. Let's put this guy back in here again. There, there it is. Right there. Two watts, 50 ohms, 47, somewhere around there. We're just, this is proof of concept as far as I'm concerned. Get down on there. There you go. All right. Goes screw or bolt or whatever you want to call it. Lock washer, flat washer. Not the other way around. You know, fingernails are good for something. I try to keep mine well, relatively well cut, but you know, I use them a lot. Okay, and uh, especially when you're dealing with. Stainless steel hardware. You ain't picking that up with a magnetic screwdriver. And Mr. G gave you perfectly good little shovels on the end of your fingers to be able to pick this stuff up with. Unless you trim them all the way down to the cuticle. Alright. That's back in. Make sure. J8. Yes. J7. Yes. J1. Yes. These are, these are touchy little guys, by the way. Don't... If it don't feel right, don't force it. Because if you do, you'll break it. Guaranteed. Alright. And you. Everybody in. Here, except for you. Alright. Put the thing back on volts. Get me a ground over here and turn her back on and see what we got. Well, we got 16 coming in, 7.7 .7 going out, and the 4.96. Alright, well, we fixed that problem. How are we doing on our display? We still got nothing. Hmm. Come on, PLL. Lock. 
Our AFC lock is still RF Mutant PLL. Sure, I got to take plug back in here. The way it's supposed to be. It's minus 15 volts. And it's plus 15 volts. That is there. Yeah. There is VCO out. Yep, 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 hmm. yep. Okay, more voltage checking. Okay. So now, I have my minus 15, my plus 15. My input, ah, oh, my output, tons of it. Did I forget something? Yes, I did. Ah, did you see that? Hmm, 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 hmm. The yellow. Cross your fingers. Out. Out she went. And up comes the power. We're good. Went out immediately, like it's supposed to. Okay, boys and girls. There it is. It works fine. I'm going to turn it off, let it cool down. Come back and see what it does in a few minutes. And I'll turn these things back on when I do. Well, it's been about an hour, and I've got this thing on and off, or off about, a, about an hour, and I just turned it on several times, and it appears to be running. Just fine. We'll try it one more time. Turn it off. Wait for it to settle down, and we'll watch over here on the LEDs. Turn it on. On. Flash. On they went. Off they went, and on to power. So, I think we got it. It's working. There's the output on the uh, spectrum analyzer. There's my power, 28 point whatever watts. And we are frequency error of about 0.04 kilohertz. 40 hertz. Yes. Okay, this is kind of overloading it a little bit, but there's the output from the spectrum analyzer on the uh, Motorola. So, looks like I got it. Hey, thanks for watching, and uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, and um, don't forget to, to uh, subscribe and hit that little bell so that you know if I'm going to do some more. Till next time.